Hi guys, welcome back to another video on RabbitMQ. In this video, we are going to look at the implementation of the competing consumer or work queue pattern in C Sharp. This is following on from one of our previous videos where we looked at the conceptual overview of the competing consumer pattern and why you might want to use it. If you're looking for the code from this video, it is available on my GitHub. So please follow the link in the description if you want to check out the code. So what we're going to start off with here is our very basic example of when we published a message onto the default exchange and the letterbox queue. So we're just going to amend this code slightly to show how we might set up a competing consumer and producer. So we'll start here in the consumer and a lot of the code will be the exact same as what we had before. So the way we create the connection factory, create the connection and the channel should be the same. Same as how we actually declare the queue. We're gonna use the letterbox queue again as there is no point to change it. So one thing we do wanna change is we kind of want to simulate a consumer consuming messages off the queue and taking some amount of time to process them. So we're gonna do that in our consumer received method here. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna choose a random processing time between say one and five seconds, and we're gonna stop the processing for that amount of time before we acknowledge the message. And just a kind of a quick word on message acknowledgements. So what we wanna do is turn off the auto act functionality that we had down here in our basic consume. So we wanna mark that as false. So this means that every message we received has to be manually acknowledged. If the message is not manually acknowledged, it will simply be put back onto the queue and be picked up by another producer. This basically gives us the opportunity to say we've finished completely processing this message. And once we acknowledge it, it can be completely got rid of off the queue and won't be sent to another consumer. If we had the auto acknowledge set to true, we wouldn't have to do this as as soon as we received a message, it would automatically be acknowledged. So say if we received a message and then it took 10 seconds to process, but in that processing time, for some reason, the there was an exception and we dropped out of our process, the message would be lost forever as it wouldn't be pushed back onto the broker. So to simulate this processing time, let's just add a random number between one and five say and call this processing time and that will be random uh, we need to create the random object first so up here we create random equals new random and then in our callback itself we'll say random dot next and then a number between one and five so one and six here so we still want to do all the same things we want to get the body we want to decode it from bytes we want to just log out that we received it so we will say received new received message and we'll just give an indication of how long we'll take to process we'll take uh, processing time to process then we actually want to kind of sleep for a little bit of time. So we want to basically simulate that we're doing some work, we're processing an image or we're doing some machine learning or whatever takes a little bit of time. So we'll say task.delay. And to use task, we need to go up and add using system threading tasks. Task.delay. And we want to delay for that random processing time. So time span from seconds, and then just give the seconds value. So in stored in the variable processing time, and just wait for this. So that will delay us for one to five seconds. So just to, as we said, indicate a bit of time. And then after that, we just want to acknowledge the message. So like we said before, so to do that, we say channel basic acknowledge or basic ACK, just give it the delivery tag from the message so ea dot delivery tag and we'll say multiple false because we're only acknowledging a single message here the delivery tag is just something to indicate which message we were processing and which message we are acknowledging so we acknowledge the correct message so now that we've written our received callback and set auto acknowledge the other only thing we need to do is we need to set that prefetch count to one that we talked about in the previous video. So we do that on the channel. So we'll do it up here. So we'll say channel 
basic QoS, so basic quality of service. And then we pass that in a prefetch size, which we'll set to zero. Prefetch count, which we want to set to one. And global equals false. So that should be the setup we need for our consumer. So again, not very many changes made to the actual RabbitMQ code. A little bit of changes made in here just to simulate a bit of processing time. So let's jump into the producer and what changes we need to make there. Again, all the stuff around connecting and declaring a queue should be the exact same. What we're gonna do is we're going to add a infinite loop to just keep publishing messages onto the broker. So every X seconds randomly chosen, we'll publish a message onto the broker. And then this should be picked up by one of our consumers. So we'll just start a while loop under our queue declare. So we'll say while true. And then in here, we will do our processing. So we can copy most of this up into the while loop. And again, we just want to instantiate the random object. So run new random. And then we want to create a random processing time. So far, uh, what we call this publishing time this time equals random dot next. And in this case, we'll publish slightly faster than we are consuming just to simulate like we had in the example, a publisher or a system that's wanting to do work quicker than the system's actually capable of doing with a single consumer. But then when we scale up to two consumers, we'll see that the system starts to handle the load a lot better. So we'll just say between one and three seconds for the processing time. Again, we just want to send the message and we're actually going to add a message ID to this just to say what message we are currently processing. So message ID, we'll start that at one. Every time we want to send a message, we're just going to increment that. And we're also going to put that on the actual message itself. So we'll just say sending message ID and then the actual message ID itself. So we want to do the same thing. We want to publish in the exact same way as we did before. The only thing we want to do is in every iteration of the loop, we just want to delay for this publishing time. So like in the consumer, we'll just say task. And again, we need to add using system threading tasks. And we want to say task.delay time span from seconds for the publishing time. And then we want to wait for that. So that should be our producer and our consumer set up. Just fix this here. So if we start these, we should start to see a good example. So let's open a terminal. Let's CD into our consumer. And let's just start a consumer, so .NET run. So we can see here, our consumer has started. Let's open a second terminal and CD into our producer. And start our producer, so .NET run the producer. So we can see we're starting to send messages, one, two, three and we should be waiting kind of between one and three seconds between each one so we're on five six if we jump over to our consumer terminal we we'll see that we're starting to process things it's taking kind of between one and four seconds to to fully process we're just started processing eight while the consumer is up to 14 and soon to be 15 while well, this is kind of lagging behind. And over time, the consumer will fall further and further behind and the producer will be publishing messages into our broker that are unprocessed. So if we look in the management UI, we can actually see here that messages are starting to build up in our system. So we're up to six now, and this will continue to get worse and worse. And say if this was something like user registration, and obviously users will be waiting a long time for their registrations to complete, which could lead to a bad user experience. So let's stop our producer and our consumer. We're up to 38, you can see here, while the producer, while the consumer had only processed uh, 21 messages. I'm just gonna also purge the queue just to get rid of those bad messages for our next example or to get rid of those messages that we haven't yet consumed. 
So once I purge the queue, these messages will just disappear. So in this case, I'm gonna actually start two consumers. So I'm gonna start this consumer here. And I'm gonna open a new window and start a second consumer. So now we've got two consumers consuming and I will restart the publisher as well. And we can see here we're publishing one, two, three. This consumer is starting to consume. So you can see one, three, six. This one is doing two, four, five, seven. So this would mean that we shouldn't be backlogging at all. Every message that goes on 10 should be processed pretty quickly by one of the consumers. You can also see something interesting here that this consumer handled two messages in a row, both ID nine and 10. And this is because of what we set in our consumer. So the basic quality of service prefetch count one, which as we saw in our conceptual overview means that a consumer will only be sent a message when it is finished processing its previous message. So this means that we can't have a, it's not a kind of a round robin dispatching, it's the fair dispatch we saw earlier where a consumer won't just be sent loads of messages if it has a big backlog. So again, let's stop our producer and our consumers. Let's get rid of this basic quality of service thing here and let's see how our consuming changes. So let's start our consumers one more time. So this one has started, this one has started, and finally let's start our producer. So again, starting at one, publishing messages. And now because we're no longer using the kind of fair dispatch with the prefetch count of one, we'll see these just increment in twos each time. So one, three, five, seven, nine and this will never change even if this consumer is slower than the other consumer if we added a third consumer we would see it go up in threes because that's just the way the round robin dispatching works so i hope this video in combination with the conceptual video previously gave you a good idea of how to implement the competing consumer pattern in dotnet if you're enjoying this RabbitMQ content, please stick around for more videos and don't forget to like the video and subscribe to the channel.